Hi, and welcome to The Shorthandist. If you've always wanted to learn shorthand, but you weren't sure where to start or you felt overwhelmed, then you've come to the right place. Today, we're gonna do an overview of Greg's shorthand and go over the basic strokes to get you started. There's no pressure for you to completely understand the system yet. This is just a way to get your toes wet without your eyes glazing over in the process. These are the basic sounds that we're gonna cover today. As I write, notice the size and the direction of each stroke. In Greg, the direction and proportion are very important for both speed and legibility. Notice how these are all either downstrokes or left to right. To practice, I recommend getting some graph paper and doing some repetitions. Notice how, for a particular shape, the smallest stroke is gonna take up about half a box. The middle stroke, a whole box. And a long stroke, about two boxes. By practicing this, you'll learn to eliminate any ambiguity in stroke size, and it'll make rereading your notes a lot easier. You might notice that the reason certain strokes are similar in shape are because the sounds they represent are in the same family. For instance, P and B are the same mouth shape, but B uses a vocal cord, and the same for F and V. In Greg, there's no soft C or soft G. All hard Cs and Gs are represented by the little K hump or the large one. For O, R, and L, we're gonna turn the stroke on its other side and work left to right, again, keeping proportion in mind. Greg's shorthand has come out with various additions throughout the years. I probably use a combination of simplified and anniversary, but they're all very similar so I recommend just picking up a book and getting into it. I'll include a link to an old manual in the description, but you can find old books on eBay for about $5. Notice T and D always use an upstroke. A and E are represented by a large loop and a small loop, and H is a dot at the beginning of the word. SH is similar to S, but it has no curve. CH is longer. And J or soft G is the longest. The stroke for long I, as an I, like, or smile, is a large loop with a small tail inside. Our TH stroke can go over or under, but is always bottom to top. A small hump for U and W. Y is often omitted or represented as an EU sound. Then we've got NG as in sing, NGK as in sink, and a dot turns a word into an ING word, as in sinking. You'd write sink, and then a dot at the end would make it sinking. 
it's a good idea to practice these strokes to build some muscle memory and make them automatic. Remember, shorthand is written, not drawn. You might be wondering why these shapes. Are they random? Not quite. Greg's shorthand is designed around the ellipse. The FV are the right side, the PB the left, KG the top, RL the bottom. I think this is one of the reasons it feels so organic to write and looks so nice. Let's try linking a few strokes to make some simple words. We can link R-O-L-S and get rolls. R-E-L, real. R-A-L, rail. Now you can see why proportion is so important. By putting a dot at the beginning of the word, it adds an H sound. So add becomes had. Hat, heat, and head. We can turn the O on its side and make it blend better with the other strokes. get home and whole. If we put an E at the end, it becomes holy. You can put an E at the end of a word to give it an EY sound. Save becomes savvy. Sing and ring. Become sink and rink. And those are the basic strokes. Now I'm gonna show you how we can blend two separate strokes into one. For example, TN or DN. We're just rounding off the hard angle the two strokes would otherwise make. In fact, the way we write the word time in shorthand is with the TM stroke. Time flies. We can do the same with DF or TV. Notice, this is a blending of the upward D stroke and the downward F stroke. The directions of the strokes do not change. We're just blending them. So if you want to write the word creative, C R E A T V. The J T blend follows the same principle. This is also the short form for gent. We can stick an L on there and get gentle. And we've got the NDNT. And we've got the NDNT blend. This is also how we write the word and. Let's talk about W. Oftentimes, it's omitted, as in when or where, but it can be represented by the U sound. Or with a line under the vowel in a word. For example, kick becomes quick and water is written as oo-a-ter, or wall as oo-wall. The over th is how we write the, and under th is there.
We can also write through, T-H-R-U, thought, T-H-O-T, thing, things, C-H-A-T, chat. Let's see if you can figure this one out. Drop your answers down below. Last step is why. Oftentimes, the why is omitted. So yellow is written ello. But if you need a Y sound, it's represented by an e u. So e u m is young. Young. E s for yes. And e u th for youth. Can you guess that one? Congratulations, those are the basic shorthand strokes. Greg's shorthand is simple, but it's not easy. It takes time to gain fluency, legibility, and speed. But it's a fun and useful hobby, and I hope you'll stick with it. Remember, it's just for you, and there's no test at the end of the week. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, hit the thumbs up and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts and questions in the comments.